welcome back, it's your boy, and we're doing the eat a bag today. I know I've talked about this for so long, but like so many things just got in my way, getting sick, getting depressed, and you know, just life, just the holiday life. Uh, but guess what, your boy ain't doing anything for the holidays. This is like my first year being 100% alone on the holidays, but uh, you know what, I'm gonna be okay. Many of you guys know I'm not really a big fan of the holidays anyway, so like to me it's kind of just another day but it's another day to do activities. So now that we are getting closer to ye old Christmas, everybody's leaving town, um, uh, work has slowed down quite a bit because there's really no one to do business with during this time. So anyway, that's why I have free time to do the eat -a bag So if you don't know what an eat -a bag is, they are uh, pretty trendy right now. So this originated in Japan. Uh, the main store that carries them is a store called Wego. I loved Wego. So they are mainly uh, an accessory store. Uh, but they also carry shoes, and sometimes they do carry clothing. So this is an Ida bag right here. So Ida in Japanese means kind of like hard to look at. And the reason why is because people fill up this clear frame with tons and tons of like keychains, charms, pins, things like that. The Ida bag has become a really big part of nerd culture because people basically use it to uh, represent their favorite character. The other day I was at the Final Fantasy art exhibition and I found a girl who had a full Ignis Ida bag and I thought it was really cute. So the themed Ida bag I'm going to make today is of course Sailor Moon themed. Surprise, surprise. I got a ton of Sailor Moon charms, pins, keychains. Some of it came from Japan while I was on my trip. Some of them were gifts, and then some of them, you know, I've just kind of collected over the years, so I have a pretty good collection of just tons of Sailor Moon stuff. So basically, they're all gonna sit here behind this clear panel. I have a, a really cute glitter one. I'm going to use a technique that Dre and Lindsay showed me, which is basically where you take a piece of cardboard and you cover it in fabric, and then you decorate it with uh, all your pins and things like that. So the reason why we do this is because it helps create a bit of structure. There's just like a really flimsy piece of fabric here, um, and what can happen is if you put too much stuff on it, it can like kind of weigh it down. Look how ugly that looks, you know, and we don't want that. The other thing is, is it makes it really easy to change out the themes. So basically, I'm gonna prep a couple boards with fabric so I can make one for Sephiroth, I can make one for Sailor Moon, uh, I can make one for Kylo Ren, uh, so it's, it's really cool. I find this to be a really, really enjoyable way to kind of, you know, show your fandom flags, if you will, and I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the most important things of like being a fan, which I love, is just like, showing your colors. I'm definitely the type of fangirl who's a very loud and proud. Uh, anytime I like something, I really, really like it. So yeah, I'm definitely a rabid fangirl. So this is one of the reasons I really like the Eat a Bag. And, and I think it's a good way to like, accessorize and make something cute. I brought up before that being a rabid Final Fantasy fangirl has uh, presented a couple challenges to kind of incorporate it into uh, my daily fashion or even my decor. You can see here I have a Final Fantasy VIII charm that I made into a kawaii necklace. Um, anyway, what I was saying is I think the Eda bag is great for converting things that may not be um, feminine, girly, kawaii into something that makes it a little bit more kawaii with this face right here. Uh, so things like Final Fantasy where it's all black, gray, dark colors, structure. This is just like a good base to make it kawaii. So I like the merging of the two because I like contrast and I like juxtaposed. Doodle doo. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. To start out, I'm taking my cardboard and just making sure that it fits in the little pocket here. Um, you can use any cardboard you want. This actually came from an Amazon box. So now I'm grabbing my fabric, and these are actually sheets that I had. Um, it's actually that like insert sheet, you know, the, the one that goes in between your comforter and the actual sheet. I always end up kicking it to the foot of the bed, so I never used it, so I figured I could just use it for this project. So I'm just wrapping it around the cardboard and getting a good fit before I make my cut. Um, the fabric was just a little thin, so I had to do two layers. And I'm using the world's oldest glue gun to do it. I actually have to push the glue through to get it to work. It's really old. Um, but yeah, simple glue gun will work. And all you have to do is kind of wrap it like a Christmas present. Of which I'm getting none this year because I'm spending Christmas alone. <laughs> no, really, I'm fine. I'm fine. 
So anyways, this is the part of the process where I realized that I couldn't do my board like Dre and Lindsay's. The reason being is their Eda board was made up of all enamel pins where they could just push the pin through the cardboard and it would just stay. I had all keychains and the only way to make keychains work is if you basically put a safety pin on the other side. So I couldn't really put safety pins through the cardboard. I mean, I'm sure you could, but you would probably have to try really hard and it would be frustrating. So I decided the way that I wanted to go about this was utilizing the second piece of fabric that I had. If I could just drape that fabric over the cardboard, basically using it as a stabilizer, then I could fish the safety pins through the back of it and you wouldn't be able to see it. And that way they could hang accordingly and then I could swap them out easily if I needed to. Um, it might not make too much sense the way that I'm telling it now, but um, just keep watching, it'll make more sense. So anyway, I just wanted to test the layout, so I'm just kind of placing all my little keychains there and just seeing what looks good. So now I am prepping the second piece of fabric, which was originally intended just to make it more opaque so the cardboard color wouldn't show through. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit longer because I wanted it to kind of wrap around. Uh, I know the way I'm explaining it is just not good, but just, just trust me guys, I have a vision. Also, I just wanted to add for clarity's sake, you guys don't have to do this method if you don't want to. You can feel free to just like pin them on the back of the actual flap of the Eda bag. That's totally fine. Um, I'm just doing this because I like the structure of it. I like being able to change out the boards. And I, I know it looks complicated, but it's a little bit easier than trying to pin it inside the flap of the Eda bag. You just have more control this way because you're not working inside of a pocket. Does that make sense? Plus, I think this method opens up more doors of opportunity to be creative. Look at me thinking. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. How am I going to do this? Anyway, what I was saying is I think it creates more opportunity for creativity because you can kind of arrange a color scheme with the fabric you're using, um, with the pins or the keychains, whatever it is that you're using. You could even arrange them in a really cute way. And I just think it adds a little bit more of like that extra touch. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. See, I'm putting the safety pin through the flap and then I'm just putting the keychain on there. Now, uh, the part of the safety pin that you're seeing is only the actual needle. You're not actually seeing the, I don't know, what would you call it? The other side, you know, the ugly side. See, there it is, it works. So that's my method. And so, yeah, I have a hard time explaining what I meant, but this is what I'm doing. Some of these keychains were kind of bulky and I was a little worried that they wouldn't fit inside the Eda bag flap or that they would kind of like push on the plastic. But actually after testing it out, I found that they sat perfectly and it looks really, really cute. Not bad, right? So after testing out my method and knowing that it worked, I took a pencil and I just made small little marks um, basically around the edges of the heart so I knew where to put keychains and where not to put keychains. That way I had a good guideline of what I wanted my layout to look like. Some of these keychains actually had um, a bit of a long chain. I ended up cutting a couple of them down to size just because they were those like little micro ball uh, chains that you could easily just shorten. Um, I did this just because I didn't want those keychains kind of like swinging around too much, you know, as I'm walking or just handling the bag in general. I know people are probably going to ask why I'm basically threading the keychain through around the needle instead of just putting the keychain 
around the needle after it's in there. Uh, I tried doing that and it's kind of hard to fish those little micro balls through the actual safety pin after it's already been pinned. It's just kind of like a tight area so I just felt like this was the easier way. a couple enamel pins that I was able to use from my Eda bag. One of the issues that I ran into was the uh, the pin or the needle or, or whatever, the backing of the pin wasn't long enough to puncture through the cardboard. And the cardboard was actually pretty thin, so I, I guess I was taken aback. I don't use pins that often, so I, I, didn't, I didn't expect to run into this problem, so there were some pins that I couldn't really use. Uh, one way that I got those pins to work is I um, basically took that clamper right there. Well, you can't see it as off screen. Uh, I took a, um, a clamp and I just kind of like pressed it down. So I kind of crushed a little bit of the cardboard just so it would fit. And that kind of worked. So I guess just a heads up if you're doing this method and you're doing enamel pins, just making sure that the pin is actually long enough to get through the cardboard. You know, something I'm thinking of right now is if I had some Sailor Moon pins, like little button pins, it would have made it so much easier because I could use the actual pin on the back of the button and use that also to hang the chains of the keychain. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm so terrible at explaining these things. But yeah, if you're doing this, don't do all keychains. Well, I guess you can do all keychains because this does work. But if you have button pins, you can use those to hang those little keychains, kind of like a two for one. Anyway, once I was finished, I did a light little swatch of hot glue on the edges. Um, basically, just light enough to where I could undo it if I wanted to, and then cutting off the excess as well. This way, if I got more keychains, pins, buttons, whatever, I could easily just lift it right off and then add it and then glue it back on again without damaging it. Okay, it's done. I actually love how it came out. I think it's so super cute. I'm probably gonna prep another board so I can make a Sephiroth one so I can swap it out whenever I'm feeling uh, saucy. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you haven't done so already, subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.